What's up guys, Ruppy here, and welcome to week 4 of the UNPL. Sorry you kind of interrupted this little, uh, tranquil scene, but... After last week's loss to Grandmaster D-Ray, I decided my team and I needed to kind of retreat into the, uh, mountains of Glaciado to kind of recompose ourselves and do a bit of training and kind of just reset and get back to the drawing board. Because after a 1-0 start, we have dropped our last two games. And I've noticed a trend with those two games. Against both Arts and D-Ray, I kind of found myself in a bit of what I will refer to as the defensive death spiral. That being... I focused so heavily on some of the bigger threats that both of those teams had that I completely forgot to account for any possible ways of breaking through the bulkier things that I thought I could handle and ultimately could not. I kind of got myself tr in a bit of a uh, cycle where no matter what I tried, I could not break through those mons and they ultimately wore me down and created the opening that Arts needed to set up Reggie Draco or wore down my uh, Plan Chien Pao checks, as was the case with D-Ray. So, in looking back over those games, I realized I built this team primarily with pivoting in mind, and I've barely used it at all this season. I, to some degree, didn't need to with Jorge, but the last two weeks, pivoting could have made the difference in getting out of those defensive death spirals and not forcing me to have to make some of the extremely aggressive plays I ultimately did in trying to actually, well, not lose those games. So, we came here to the mountains to kind of get ourselves back in order. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip on over to the chalkboard to discuss this week's match and how I plan on turning things around. Week 4 is kind of special because we are the game of the week this week against our opponents, the spine-chilling Gengar. Coached? Well, by Gengar. Almost seems kind of fitting for Halloween season, I guess, that this matchup is, is game of the week, considering the week I believe this... Considering the week this will be going up, it'll actually be kind of close to Halloween. Regardless, his team will be appearing off to the right. Uh, Gengar is currently sitting at a 3-0 record with a plus 11 differential. He and Arts are currently tied for first place. And I don't want to be that guy, but I kind of need this win. So, sorry Gengar, I might have to play spoiler here today. Gengar's team is as follows. Iron Valiant, Empoleon, Glamora... Rillaboom, Hydreigon, Delphox, Zapdos, Mamoswine, Miss Magius, and Wigglytuff. Glamora and Delphox are his Terra captains. Glamora can Terra into a Poison, Water, or Grass type, and Delphox can, t can Terra into a Fire, Fairy, or Ground type. A solid team for sure. There's a reason he's 3-0 with it after all. But, like I said, I kind of wanted to get back to basics, and... Remind myself of what exactly this team was built to do originally, which is pivoting. So, I cooked up a couple of interesting ideas this week to hopefully account for that. And we're going to start off with our team's MVP so far, Calamity. I'm not going to lie, Infernape has been an absolute menace so far this season, and I love it. But, this week it's kind of going to be taking on more of a uh, support role. Long story short, Infernape is meant to be my dedicated lead for this game. Regardless of what Gengar wants to lead with, Calamity's main purpose here is to start the battle, set up rocks, and then what it does from there kind of depends on the situation. It is Focus Sash in order to guarantee it gets up the rocks. I've got Close Combat on there so it has some form of stab, knock off and U-turn or just for pivoting around and just being a general nuisance. With the 232 speed EVs, Infernape is guaranteed to outrun a non-Scarf Miss Magius. Iron Valon is honestly the only thing he has that outruns everything on my team, barring Tornadus Therian. A good chunk of my upper speed tiers outrun his entire team. So, kind of hoping to take advantage of that. 
Also, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that he has no hazard removal. Because Hydreigon did not get Defog back. Zapdos did not get Defog back. And I don't believe Empoleon did either. He does have Mortal Spin in Glamora. But I do have a way of handling that. So... Kind of forcing Glamora to have to spin definitely makes things a little easier, but primarily Infernip's here to get up rocks and just be a and just be a nuisance otherwise. It's not really here to steal the show, more so just to kind of set up the rest of my team. Which now leads me to the two mons that I'm kind of hoping are gonna be my uh, double win con for this week. Starting with the long-awaited UMPL debut of my Serena, Aram. Anyone who saw my uh, Season 7 run in the IBL way back in the day might recognize this set. This is the Choice Scarf Serena I brought, I want to say again, I forget what game that was. Uh, there might be a card that pops up that kind of links to that game. But Scarf Serena actually has a fairly solid match in this game. Being able to U-turn all around, Hydreigon certainly doesn't want to be taking U-turns. Uh, Power Whip certainly threatens the likes of Empoleon, Mammoth Swine. It's a huge hit on a huge chunk of things, and with Scarf, Serena outspeeds everything. With the 168 speed EVs, I, I'm guaranteed to outrun Iron Valiant. For, I think I speed crept specifically for Iron Valiant if it is not booster energy. Though, if, if he does go booster energy Valiant, I do have the bulk to be able to take hits from it. So, it cannot necessarily Oko me. Plus, with Queenly Majesty, Serena is safe from the likes of Ice Shark from Mammoth Swan if he deduces I'm Scarfed, or even Grassy Glide from Rillaboom if he decides to. if he's running Grassy Terrain Rillaboom and it comes to this game. Because Grassy Glide gets boosted priority in Grassy Terrain, I do believe that means it is blocked by Queenly Majesty, which means Serena can easily U turn out on it, take a huge chunk with it. Knockoff is there to get rid of items, as well as Obliterate Miss Magius. And Play Rough is there for the likes of Hydreigon and Iron Valiant. Serena's here to basically outspeed, hit things hard, and be an overall pain in the ass. Which kind of opens the door for Rain the Meloetta. Rain has been having a bit of an odd season. Didn't even get to hit the field during week 1, weeks 2 and 3. Had some good moments, but couldn't quite ultimately capitalize. This week, I think, is going to be the week that changes. And that's because I'm bringing out a Calm Mindset. Meloetta has the natural special bulk that when boosted with Calm Mind, is going to make it incredibly hard to take down, especially since a good chunk of Gengar's team is more specially leaning. I do have 32 defense EVs to help, uh beef up the physical bulk, especially since if Delphox is running Psy Shock, that allows Meloetta to kind of take it a little easier. I'm running Terra Fairy this week, because Gengar does have a few things that really do not want to be taking, taking Fairy hits. It also allows me, it does kind of make me a bit weaker to Glamora, but Meloetta outruns Glamora naturally, and the 224 speed EVs are meant to ensure it stays that way. And we can kind of go from there. Psy Shock is my Psychic Stab of choice, because Gengar's team is a bit weaker on the physical side than the special side, and the things that kind of are higher up on the physical end don't really want to be taking Psy Shocks anyway, especially once I get a couple boosts up. Shadow Ball is primarily for Miss Magius, but it also allows me a way to hit Delphox if it hasn't terrored yet. And Dazzling Gleam is my fairy stab of choice. I I debated Terror Blast because it and Dazzling Gleam are the same power, but to be honest, there are probably a few moments in this game where I don't want to be having Meloetta terrored if I haven't already terrored. So this allows me a strong fairy move to use with a boost or two to be able to pop things super hard without having to risk my Terra just yet. Especially since one particular scenario is Delphox. Regardless of whether or not Delphox Terras, I can take Psy Shocks better from that thing, especially if it wants to get into a boosting war with me, if I have not Terraed yet. If I have Terraed, it becomes a little more challenging. But 
Meloetta is here to set up and hopefully run through this team. Moving down the line, we have Road Roller, who is definitely looking to be a men menace in its own right this week. I'm running Booster Energy for the first time on this thing this week. Honestly, it feels like a bit of a gamble, but Booster Energy will allow Treads to outrun everything on his team, barring Iron Valiant, unless it boosts, uh, or unless it has Booster Energy. But even if... Even still, once the booster energy is wasted, Treads can still come in, spin hazards away, because he does have a couple, quite a few rock setters, and Glamour is able to set up everything except Sticky Web. But with a rapid spin boost, Iron Treads is right back up to that speed. 248 speed, believe it or not, actually still outruns Miss Magius. So that allows me to put a tiny bit more into Spadef to be able to allow Road Roller to take a few hits better. Earthquake, Iron Head, and Ice Spinner are my moves of choice. Earthquake and Iron Head are stab and certainly threaten a lot of the things. Especially since it kind of allows Iron Trez to be able to outrun Delphox and be some sort of threat to it no matter what Terra it decides to go for. Earthquake might seem like a silly option considering he has Rillaboom and anyone who watched my BBR run knows I am very well aware of Rillaboom's grassy terrain and the fact that Earthquake is weakened by it. But... Ice Spinner eliminates terrain, which is the other reason I put it on the set. That allows me to get rid of the grassy terrain and be able to kind of set myself up, as well as allowing a way to be able to pop the likes of Zapdos so it doesn't completely wall the set. I could have put Full Switch on here, but I think Road Roller in this game kind of needs th these moves. It doesn't really need to pivot around. I can just flat switch with it if I need to. But it's meant to come in, set off booster energy, and kind of get rid of hazards and punch holes in this team. And a story. Getting back to the basics though, and my uh, pivoting plans. That is where my last two mons come into play. Laundry Day the Rotom Wash, and Hreisvelger the Tornadus Therian. Laundry Day is Leftovers, Hreisvelger is Boots. Basically, I brought these two to... I guess in, to some degree kind of force a bit of my own defensive death spiral against the likes of Rillaboom and Mamoswine, because Mamoswine really has a lot that does not want to switch into it. Rillaboom kind of the same, even with Grassy Glide getting nerfed. But Tornado's Theory can take hits from Rillaboom and immediately threaten with a Hurricane. Mamoswine does not want to be eating Hurricanes, and it certainly does not is not going to appreciate a Focus Blast. And Laundry Day can really kind of just take any hit from Mammoth, or it easily takes on Mammoth Swine and scares it out. And if Rillaboom comes in, I can either burn it with a Will O Wisp, perhaps set up a Reflect to kind of make things a little easier, especially to allow Rain to set up, or just Volt Switch out into Race Felger and we kind of start uh, the defensive Death Spiral dance. It might seem a bit odd, but. I think it'll work out, because both these mons have the bulk. Tornadus Therian is EV to be able to outspeed a max speed Iron Valiant that is not running booster energy. And even if it is running booster energy, Tornadus Therian has enough HP investment to be able to take the hits and threaten with a Hurricane. Laundry Day's bulk is specifically set up so that on the off chance Gengar predicts me bringing Rotom Wash and decides to throw maybe Freeze Dry on the Mammoth Swine. I can take even a Life Orb Freeze Dry from it easily and just blast it with a Hydro Pump and that is the end of the Big Woolly Mammoth. I don't have anything that's necessarily meant to kind of just punch significant holes in the likes of Zapdos or Empoleon, but I, le I legitimately feel I do have everything I need to be able to overwhelm them if I set things up correctly. And it all is going to start with getting Calamity's Rocks up and just going from there, seeing how he wants to play it. So, that is the team. As I kind of return us to our little, uh, Mountain Tranquility setting for a moment. We are going to get our heads screwed back on straight. We are going to approach this game of the week with, uh, with everything we've got. And we will step out of the snow and see you guys when it's battle time. All right, it is a battle time. We are going to see if I can turn my fortunes around and deal with Gengar and his onslaught. 
So let's see, he brought Iron Valiant, Zapdos, Hydreigon, Clamora, Mamoswine, and Empoleon. So... No Miss Mages, which is kind of nice. No, uh, Delphox either. So the Glamora is his one and only Terra Captain. It's gonna be interesting to see how... What kind of... What his Terra plan is. I think I've got... I made sure I brought options for all of his possible Terras for both Mons. It'll be interesting. I am gonna go ahead and lead Calamity, though, as is the plan. And see what he leads with. If he leads Glamora, I may just U-turn out, try to preserve my Sash. Or I could go from there. We will see. But I know, I know what my game plan is, and we are going to try to make it work to the best of our abilities. So, good luck, have fun, Gengar. And happy Game of the Week, everyone, even if you can't hear my voice for the Game of the Week. So, leading the Empoleon, which is absolutely fine with me. My plan was to set rocks right away, so I'm just going to go ahead and go for that. If he wants to set rocks too, he can't. He's just going to switch, which is absolutely fair. I am just going to get my rocks up, no problem at all, as he goes into Zapdos. That's fine, my rocks are up. And we are already off to what I feel is a fairly solid start. So... Considering Ape's main job is done for this game... I am honestly just going to go ahead and knock off and get rid of whatever item the Zathos is holding, which is boots. Yep. And no static, which is fine. That is going to break my sash. But... I do have rocks up. Zapdos is without its boots, which is absolutely perf, which is absolutely amazing. And out is going to come the Glamora, I presume, to try to spin these away. As it is leftovers. Fair enough. So, considering that it hasn't terra yet... It's probably gonna mortal spin if I were to hazard a guess. I'm just gonna go ahead and U-turn out, because I have no reason not to. I know I outrun this thing, and I know it's not scarfed. So, he is terra water. That is good to know. That does not change the fact that I am just you turning out, getting a decent chunk of damage off on this thing. That do is going to set up some, to some toxic spikes because of toxic debris, that's good to note. In response to that, however... Part of me wants to go into Aram now, part of me also wants to go into Road Roller and see what he... And see what uh, the game plan is. Alternatively, hmm, what do you go power gem on? I'm going to go laundry day. I know I can both switch out on this thing. And we can just go from here. As he just yep, there's the mortal spin. I figured as much. Maybe I should have just gone on treads, but it is fine. Cause I can definitely just volt switch out on this thing and it's not that big a deal. Wonder Day being poison kinda sucks, but it's just regular poison. It'll be fine.
would definitely like to see what all this thing is, as I'm just going to Volt Switch out. I don't think he's going to stay in. Yeah, I didn't think so. So what do you go into on this, then? Hydreigon! I am absolutely fine with that. Just going to Volt Switch out on you. And now the question becomes, what kind of Hydreigon are you? I've got a couple options I could play here. Confirm Calamity Sash is already broken. If it's scarfed, I would I would know that for sure at least. Um If I were to go into Therian. If he scarf a Draco Meteor would not kill. If he specs, I outrun. So, I'm going to go to Earthquake Felger. I am so tempted to just Focus Blast right now, and I don't think it will kill this thing, because I didn't put a lot of special attack investment in. This thing was meant to be more bulky. I'm just going to U-turn out and see what intel I can gain from this. If I, if I outrun, I'm going to assume Specs for the time being. If he outruns... Okay, I do outrun, so it's not Scarf. That's good to know, at least. So if he is Specs, then... What is the play? I don't think he's going to go for a fire move, so honestly, I think my play is Road Roller. I will get my speed boost, which I outran this thing anyway, which is perfectly fine. And this thing should be in range of an Ice Spinner. Yep, he's just going to Draco, which Road Roller takes. I absolutely do not see this thing staying in. He has no... Well, he's got no way of spin blocking. So, that knocked me down to... 90. Hmm. So, very po... There's a very high chance this thing is, in fact, Specs, which... He may stay in just to try to pick me off. So, I'm gonna go for Ice Spinner just because of that. See if he wants to preserve this thing, or if he thinks I'm going to spin, perhaps. I mean, for all he know, I may not have spin on this thing, because I do have, I did bring Serena as well. Just going to switch out, which is absolutely fine. Into Glamora, which Terra Water certainly makes this a pain, but that is perfectly fine. Hmm... Starting to realize the one instance where le where maybe leftovers would have been where maybe Volt Switch would have been kind of nice to have. So all I know from this thing so far is it has Mortal Spin. I would not be surprised to see an Earth Power here because it definitely picks off Treads. I mean, a rapid spin would really just get rid of the two layers, but also just set one right back up. Hmm. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go into Rice Felger actually. Because that that way, if your if your Earth powers or energy balls, Race Dogger can take it. If he has Power Gem, the Terra Blast, Terra Water. Okay, that's fine. Race Dogger takes that. All right. So, I could be in worse spots, honestly. 
I know I can take another Terra Blast if he wants to go for it. Don't know if he brought Power Gem predicting Rice Fogger to come. I'm... I'm gonna go ahead and Hurricane, actually. We're just, we're just gonna r roll this. See what he wants to go into. Which is gonna be the Zapdos. Fair enough. But it will definitely take this Hurricane. I do roll the Confusion, so there is that at least. Honestly, a big part of me really wants to go back into Road Roller. Yeah, I think I'm just going to flat switch into Road Roller. Uh, avoid potential static if I go U-turn. And let's see if I can call the electric move. The fairly obvious electric move. Assuming this thing actually hits me. Doesn't hit itself in confusion. Which, just going to go U-turn. Which is fair. Completely fair. So, starting to realize I might have found my way back into this defensive death spiral I was trying to avoid. I haven't seen any rocks from Glamora yet, though. Gonna go into Valiant now. Okay, no booster energy. That is very nice to know. So the question then becomes, what are you? Part of me wants to go into Tornado's Theory and to find out, perhaps. I mean, Scarf is still a possibility. I really don't want to rule that out just yet. Hmm. You know what? I'm just gonna go into race. I'm gonna go into race, Felger. Maybe a possible mistake, but if he specs and actually calls us with a Thunderbolt, then good on him. Anything else I can take if this thing is specs, but I'll be able to get some intel on it. He just goes Moonblast, which... Oh, you are definitely specs. There is no way you're not specs with that. I'm just going to go ahead and U-turn. Because I know I outrun this thing, then, if it's not Scarf. Because there is no way that is Scarf damage. That did way too much. Just going to switch out. That is fine. I will have the initiative on this because of U-turn. Back into Zapdos. Uh, if I get static, that would be very unfortunate right about now. Okay, it doesn't happen. Whew! Okay. So this is starting to become a bit of an issue, and I'm not a fan of it. We've... <laughs> Need a way to break this. And honestly, part of me feels like going into Iron Treads... Might be worth it at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna go back into Treads, because I can get a spin-off. That kind of feels like it should be my top priority at this point, getting rid of these uh, Toxic Spikes. If he wants to U-turn out again with Zapdos, he can be my guest. But Road Roll is going to get a speed boost out of this, so we are right back to plus one. Even without the uh, Booster Energy. He's going to Roost. Fair enough. Now that I think I'm just going to Ice Spinner. Take a chunk out of this thing. So, U-Turn and Roost is all I've seen 
from the Zapdos so far. There's the static. I was wondering when that was going to come into play. And he does have Heat Wave. Fair enough. So, first casualty of this game is on my end. And now we need to adjust. And looking over this team... I'm starting to wonder if maybe going into rain now is my best bet. Get just kind of get this started now. Just given what I'm up against. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go into rain. We're going to get this party started right now. Just go ahead and start calm mining up. I can take whatever hit you want to throw at me, no problem. Re I haven't terrored yet, so really don't think you want to be sending in Glamora. Granted, I outrun that thing anyway. I wonder if Mortal Spin is his only poison move. Which, in which case, Rain is sitting a lot prettier than they would be if I had Sludge Bomb. Or if it had, say, Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave. But yeah, I definitely think Rain is in a really solid position right now. To start getting some boosts up. And then... And then cracking this team. Like my rocket would have made things a lot nicer. He just did a flat switch. Okay. Into Empoleon. Which is fine. Rain is going to get this call mined up. And we're going to go ahead and call mine again. And we're going to and we're going to get the ball rolling. Because I, I really don't think this Empoleon can touch me. I haven't Terra'd yet, so... I'm not Terra Fairy. Without that, Steel is not as difficult if he's got, say, Flash Cannon on this thing. I'm freaking this thing would probably be more bulky, perhaps. I'm a plus two now. So Rain is definitely in the driver's seat. As this thing is just going to flip turn out, which does a decent chunk... Into what I know is a Specs Hydreigon. And given the team he brought. If he is Specs with Flash Cannon and calls me going Terra Fairy now, what does this do? We do less than Dark Pulse would if I st if I stay the course. So I'm just going to go ahead, Thrasilize now and click the Dazzling Gleam button, and we're going to go from here. We're, we're going to get this party started now. So this should be a dead Hydreigon. The Terra Fairy debut of Rain. Oh, I'm going to eat this Dark Pulse easily. And then this Dazzling Gleam is definitely going to kill. That is Hydreigon out of the picture. So that is one potential, uh, especially offensive threat off my back. Especially since I'm pretty sure double specs was the play between Hydreigon and Valiant. Which, against any other Mon that might have worked. But I think Rain is in a really good spot right now to take both of them on. Glamora is still an option, but I am at plus two. Out is going to come Mamoswine. Swine. 
So, this is interesting. I'm not even going to bother saving these boosts. I'm just going to switch out into uh, Laundry Day. Not even going to bother trying to uh, mess with this. A plus two, I, uh, from full health, Psyshock would have been a roll. I would rather not risk that. Because rain is still invaluable, I have already proven that. So at this point, without Hydreigon, what do you go into? I would think, I don't think, I mean, maybe not Glamour on a predictive Volt Switch? I'm going to Will-O-Wisp. Will-O-Wisp seems like the safest middle ground play, because burning anything really helps out a lot. If he tries to stay in, maybe go for a freeze drive, predicting me to Volt Switch. That at least cripples Mammoth Swine. And anything else coming in really is not going to appreciate getting burned. Empoleon. I'm fine. I am perfectly fine with that. Empoleon being burned works out incredibly nicely for me. Since I really don't think this thing wa I mean, if he is if he is especially bulky, then he definitely takes a Volt Switch. I'm not gonna appreciate it though. I guess the real question at this point becomes, what do I go into? And I think I have an idea. I'm gonna go ahead and Volt Switch out, take a chunk out of this Empoleon. Nice chunk at that. And I am honestly tempted to just go into Aram. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna send in my Scarfer. And we're gonna see how Empoleon responds. I wouldn't... Maybe a flip turn out? Nope, rocks. So... And you do have leftovers. Alright. So having rocks up on my side of the field kind of sucks, but, but uh, Infernape's Sash was already broken. And I'm just going to go for a Power Whip, because I think it's a roll to kill Empoleon from this range. Anything else really isn't going to appreciate it. Zapdos. Somehow that does not surprise me. That still took a chunk out of it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a U-turn, honestly, predicting me to switch out. I can take a Heat Wave. And part of me honestly thinks their last offensive move is probably an electric one at this point. That would be an incredibly... I'm going to stand in Power Whip. I'm going to predict the U-turn out. Get more damage off on the Zapdos. As it just roosts. Alright then. Honestly, good middle ground play. And at that, I think we're just going to go back into Laundry Day. That is fun. I honestly don't think I'm in a bad spot. I mean, Rotom Wash is poisoned, but most of my Mons are still fairly healthy. Whereas on Gengar's side of things, Zapdos has kind of been beaten up. Yes, it can still roost off damage, but it's got a limited amount of roost, and I can wear the... Th and I know with enough boosts that uh, Rain threatens. Glamora and Empoleon are both chipped down. Empoleon is burned. These rocks are going to be annoying, but nothing I don't think I can deal with at this point.
Because Laundry Day is still sitting kind of pretty. And at this point... It is tempting to set up the Reflect. But I think I'm just going to Volt Switch and see what Zapdos does. Just going to U-turn out. That's fine. Laundry Day takes that. And I can just Volt Switch out on whatever comes in. And then try to take the initiative right back. Which is going to be the Empoleon. Which is not going to appreciate what's about to happen. So that's a big hit off on you. Gonna bring Laundry Day back. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and send Calamity. Yeah, send Calamity back out. Because Calamity Sash is already broken. And I know I can scare this thing out with a close combat. You know what? I'm just gonna go for it to try to get rid. At least get a huge hit off on whatever comes in. Which is gonna be Glamora! Which is certainly not going to appreciate what's about to happen. That is a huge hit off on this thing. Honestly, kind of feels like a potential two shot. I mean, the toxic debris is a problem, but. Maybe we can work around that right now. I'm pretty sure he's going to Terror Blast, Terror Water to try to get rid of this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go ahead and Sack Calamity here and get my rocks back up. I am actually fine with this play. So, I do lose... I do lose Infernape, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and send in Serena to threaten this thing out. Pretty sure he knows I'm scarfed at this point, but that is perfectly fine. I definitely threaten this thing with a power-up. I don't think he's staying in. So I'm going to U-turn out. Spiky Shield! Alright. Alright. Clever play. Very clever play. I will give him that one. Spiky Shield. We can't use it two in a row, so I can still just go ahead and U-turn out with Aram. He's probably going to stay in seeing that now, but U-turn will still take a chunk out of this thing. Which makes me wonder at this point, is his last move... Something like Sludge Wave? Is it a rock move? I mean, I'm pretty sure at this point he knows I'm Scarf, considering this thing outsped Zapdos, but depending on his Zapdos' speed investment... You turn out, get some damage off on this thing. Uh, all these toxic spikes. They are annoying, but we will find ways around them.
We will find a way. I'm just gonna go into laundry day. I wonder if the immortal spins get rid of my rocks. Yep, that's exactly what he's gonna do. Which, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the way I see it right now... If I can get some sort of chip off on Mammoth Swine, I still think I can get... I still think I can get uh, Rain set up to sweep. I'm just gonna go ahead and Volt Switch out on you, because a Volt Switch I think will threat... Gonna use Spiky Shield to try to get Leftovers back. That is fine, though, because... I mean, yes, it's more Poison Chip off on, uh... It's more Poison Chip off on Run and Wash, but... I still threaten this thing with a Volt Switch. Yeah, I'm just gonna Volt Switch. I'd be intrigued to see if he goes into Mammoth Swine here to call my Volt Switch. I mean, that'd be a risky play, because I... I mean, maybe not, just because Laundry Day can still... I guess we'll see. Nope, into Empoleon, which... I think this Volt Switch might actually kill. Yes, it will. So that is Empoleon off the table, which is nice. Hmm, I think what I want to do here is go back into Thrace Felger. Because I know it outruns everything. If he sends in Zapdos, that's fine. I wouldn't be surprised to see Zapdos, honestly. But I can get more uh, Regenerator on Hrace Felger, and we can go from there. I mean, if he sends a Mammoth Swine, that'd be intriguing as well. Right now, Zapdos is the potential biggest problem I think I'm facing, because I am running out of things to... I mean, I don't think I brought much, admittedly, in retrospect, to crack it. I, th I thought I was going to be able to potentially overwhelm it. I'm just going to flat switch into Laundry Day and, po and probably let it go. Just to be able to get more... Uh, Recovery. Discharge! Finally have that last move. And honestly, kind of not surprised. So, knowing that, Oh, this is going to be real difficult to pull off with rain with two layers of toxic spikes up. On the plus side, though, I cannot be, uh... On the plus side, I can't be, uh... I can't be paralyzed. So I do have that working for me. I'm going to go ahead and get a Calm Mind up. I would not be surprised to see a U-turn out. And I also wouldn't be surprised to see Mammo come in, because without any chip, even only a plus one, I don't think I can Oko it without a crit. Still don't know what kind of Mammo it is. I've seen... I mean, I've only seen Earthquake so far.
then again, I wasn't terrored. But I would have to get back up to plus two, and I don't think this thing is going to allow me to do that. And rain. Yep, there's the Mammoth Swine. So I need to see where my HP is at after this, because unfortunately, I think if I lose rain, I lose this game. One ninety one, which even if he's not life orb, that puts me in range of an earthquake. Hmm. It's a max roll on icicle crash though. If he goes for that, predicting me to switch. Problem is that I'm at the mercy of poison and ice shard, but I think I have to go. I think I have to just go for this. I don't think I've got much choice here. He outspeeds me! You're Scarf Mammo! You're Scarf Mammo, and that's. That's gonna be another loss for me. Scarf Mammo Swine. Because, yeah, it should not have been able to outspeed Meloetta. It should not have been able to outspeed. Yep, Scarf Mammal's gonna finish the job. So, the losing streak continues, unfortunately, and on prime time, no less. And a 4 0 loss is definitely. Well, for those of you on prime time, I hope you enjoyed this display of uh, me getting my teeth kicked in. <laughs> that, that's all I can say. I was outplayed. Even when I think I'm. Even when I think I've got the answers, it doesn't happen. Okay. That's... I mean, I get the need to preserve differential. Well, I mean, if Icicle Crash misses, there is that possibility, in which case he loses differential, and I know beating me far worse than Arts beat me is his ticket to try to basically overtaking Arts in the bracket at this, or in the, the standings at this point. So we're just going to sit back and just keep going with this because I ha really have nothing else I can do. And with that, I go into, Hr into Hreisfelger and that's his ball game. <sighs> GG, Gengar. Thought I, had th thought I finally had a clever way of breaking it, but... Once again, I let myself wander into the defensive death spiral and ultimately it came back to bite me. That was the whole point of me being, bringing a lot of pivoting this week, and it, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. So that's going to be a 4-0 loss. My Columbus Sioux are definitely falling to the bottom of the standings now. I, I promise I'm a much better player than this. At least I like to think I'm a much better player than this. Uh... I suppose if you want to tell me otherwise and just go ahead and put me on a, put me on a spit and roast me, just go ahead and do so in the comments. Maybe it'll motivate me to somehow get get my get my acting gear. But regardless, GG Gengar. Sorry I didn't make this game of the week as interesting as some of the other games of the week you guys have probably had. I suppose my game with D-Ray last week might have been a better choice in that regard. But this is the world we live in. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I have been Ruppy, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.